This is episode 28 of Give Me a Chance, and it is your host speaking, Vittoria. Hi everyone, and welcome to a new episode of Give Me a Chance. This is the last episode before we go on a summer break and we will be back in September. So let's get started with that. Today, fellow Italian Elena will join me to share her story of how she got the chance to change her life after escaping a toxic working environment to become a career coach. And here comes Elena. Hi Elena, welcome to Give Me a Chance. Ciao, how are you doing? Ciao, how are you doing? Hello, yeah, finally Italians over here. Nice to have you on. Yes, thank you for having me. Yeah, and how crazy. Uh, we are both Italian and not in Italy right now, right? Where are you at? <laughs> Near to you. <laughs> in the Netherlands, in a very nice sunny city called The Hague. Well, probably we are even neighbors because we are in the same city. Incredible things happening this way. Yeah, it's difficult to believe. But, uh, well, uh, Elena, where do you come from in Italy? I come from Rome. Boring, I know. <laughs> Boring? Well, what do you say? <laughs> I, I think so many people would like to be in your shoes. But and uh, have you always been uh, uh, in the Netherlands these years? How did things happen with you? Yeah, uh, well, I I was born and raised in in Rome. And then at some point I decided that I wanted to do something with my job. And uh, I accepted um, to work for the same company over here in the Netherlands where the headquarter was. So it was a sort of a safety net choice because I knew the people, I knew the managers, I knew the work, the job and the company. So it was kind of nice. Elena, I was totally interested in your story because indeed we we got in touch because of uh, the topic of this podcast indeed getting the chance or yeah the opportunity to change one's life yes and i guess your story is uh, a pretty interesting one yeah i would say that at some point i was uh kicked <laughs> somewhere <laughs> and I decided to give myself a chance to do something different can you tell us a little bit of your background and I mean your working background because I guess it's a story that is centered around the fact that you had a job. Yes, so indeed I um, I started in 2000 and that will give away a little bit my age but it doesn't matter because I like it <laughs> and it started in 2000 and then I started in an American chemical company and I was doing uh, business analytics. That's summarize it like that yeah. and then he went on and on and then i came over here to the netherlands and then always business analytics with more responsibility uh and then a lot of a lot of numbers a lot of crunching numbers a lot of reports a lot of strategies a lot of prices a lot of forecasting a lot of market researches and then i was promoted to, into a different company i was promoted as um uh, manager for business analytics yeah. and then I moved again into another company. So uh, over here in the Netherlands, overall, I had four different types of um, companies yeah. that I worked with, I worked in. And then, as you said, something happened. <laughs> yeah, but it did, wait, before we go to the moment in which something happened, um, yeah, how, how did you like working in such an environment in which you had to crunch numbers? Were you interested in that? So I was totally interested in the strategic side of it, mm -hmm. meaning that you come into me and we need to pull up a whole pricing strategy for 30 customers, 100 customers, whatever. No, no problems with that. But when it was the time to crunch the numbers and in these big companies, we're talking about corporations, right? So in the case of big companies, we're talking about big data. Yeah. For me, it was... Oh, gosh, gosh, that was the side of the job where I wasn't good at it. I was never good in mathematics. I knew how to, how to do it and I knew how to read the numbers and I knew how to crunch the numbers at the end because it's quite, you know, after a while, you, you pull a couple of, uh, couple of tricks. You get used to it because uh, you have the tools, but I never liked it. And, uh, hmm. and then at the very end of the day, it looked like I was chosen by my job, but I didn't choose it. What what interested you the most when when you were growing up? Indeed, what were your interests in? I was interested in the fact that I could come across with a lot of nationalities. I always worked in international companies. I 
I don't like working with companies where there is just one language and mm. one, let's say, type of environment. I, I love multicultural, multifaceted uh, environment. Uh, so indeed, as you say, um, different nationalities and different people was probably something that really uh, lingered to you, something that really interested you. Yes, yes, because uh, as a superpower, I'm an includer. And for those who do know what an includer does and, and for those who don't, basically an includer includes. So I'm able to take all different nationalities. And then I actually, my last team, we were five and each and every one of us had a different nationality. Oh, cool. That, that's yeah. amazing. I think this might come back later on in your story or this is a major point that is recurring. But let's go to the moment, to the point in which you got yourself a chance to change your life. Ha. How did it happen? Yes. Um, I said earlier it was a little bit of a kick. Well, a mm. little bit more than a kick. Because um, I worked in a toxic environment. And, um, and yeah, when you work in a toxic environment, you try to protect yourself. Uh, as much as you can until there's the point where you can't anymore. Yeah. And, and no one is there to protect you rather than yourself. So that's really the, the situation of the, of the uh, toxic environment. So after one of the many nasty calls I had with my uh, manager um, and I got a phone call and it was one of my best uh, performance in the performers in the in the team and he announced to me elena i need to tell you that i'm resigning and then i heard a crack what happened what happened then what happened is that i had the same reaction as a, a kid who doesn't want to go to school I don't want to go. I don't want to go. I don't want. I had this kid screaming inside of me. I don't want to go there. I don't want to go there. And on the other side, if I was going, for me, I was totally no energy, no nothing. I couldn't give anything more than just being there, but not really being productive. Yeah. So must, yeah. Yeah. It must have been a really stressful situation and really painful, also to be away from home because I guess it was during the period you were here in The Hague, I yeah. believe. What was your reaction? How would you describe um, your mindset at the time? I would say I tried to soothe this little kid who was screaming inside of me and was really saying, I don't want to go, I don't want to go, I don't want to go. And because uh, from past experiences, I knew when my body is telling me something uh, very loudly. And mm -hmm. I said, okay, let's not go. Um, so over here in the Netherlands, you need to go through a whole process for uh, report sick. And then I started really, you know, I said, I'm at home. Now you're safe. Now you're at home. You don't have to go there. Um, I was not replying to my manager's emails and phone calls and stuff because he was calling. He was calling. Oh, he really? wanted to understand. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. How did you manage to give yourself that chance to change? In um, Well, of course, let's say uh, I did take some practical uh, actions, which was also going to a lawyer uh, in order to understand what was, if I had the case, what was yeah. my case. I gave myself the space to really stay at home. Uh, it was pre-COVID, this situation, so I really... You know, I mean, I was leaving uh, very early in the morning because I had to uh, go to Amsterdam. Uh, so it's 60 kilometers from here-ish, uh, one way. So it was 120 kilometers per day that I had to go. I was really looking at my, my apartment and say, oh, how much I wish I could stay in here and work from here, which I couldn't. So I gave myself the chance to stay at home, give myself the time. What you really do when you need to heal So you give yourself the time to heal. And healing, in, what, in which form did it take up for you? Uh, I started thinking uh, what was the next step. And I started talking to people uh, that I trusted because I already had sort of an idea in my head that I wanted to go from 
Hello, hello. Uh, <laughs> that's a twist, which I like a lot. <laughs> so I wanted to go from numbers and crunching numbers to uh, the human side of it. So right. HR side of it. Yeah. But of course, uh, let's say that I didn't have any training, any I, I did have a little bit of experience in hiring people and stuff like that, but it was not the sort of experience that it's needed in order for, yeah, for you to be, or for your CV to be considered for the next role, especially here in the Netherlands where they try to be risk averse. So you need to, you need to apply for a job and it needs to be something that you did already. So that's exactly. kind of thinking, you know, yeah. the fact that you like interacting with people and different people, it comes back. So, yes. Yeah. How did it flourish? <laughs> Then at some point, uh, after months that I was trying to apply to be a recruiter, because mm -hmm. that's what I wanted to do, okay. and not having a lot of chance, at some point I started thinking, okay, what do I have over here that can be useful to people? Right. And um, I came across coaching. I was thinking about it the other day. I came across coaching uh, in 2009. Right. and uh, for different reasons and then the coaching came across so there was I already knew that the people part of it I loved it because when I saw the coaches I was wow they're doing a very fantastic job and when I saw the recruiters I said wow they're doing a very fantastic job so I said okay recruiters that is, that is a no-go for now but what can I do in order to yeah become a coach because yeah. coaching might be something that I can do I don't need to speak a different language rather than the ones that I'm already, uh, that I'm already, uh, that I already know. And what can I do in order to become a coach? Yeah. Plus I had these researches that I, I was already doing in uh, looking for a job. So I had a lot of data and material and despite I'm not good in numbers, but I know how to, you know, take out the information, see the patterns and, uh, And see, uh, and see what's working and what's not. So I realized that I had a product. So that was for you basically a major opportunity to change your life yeah. before the pandemic, right? Just slightly before the pandemic. And then if we want to add a little bit more to it, it's a product that you need to have. But also I wanted to understand how it works. How do you become a coach? basically yeah. yeah and most more in practical a career coach so i talk to people you talk to the people that are doing exactly the same job that you'd like to do and now that you have taken the step you have basically also changed your mindset you have changed everything about your old world into yes. something new what is the thing that you appreciate now the most about yourself that i gave myself the permission hmm. to say That's the job I want to do. And because you do have the voices that they are telling you, yeah, but what if, what it goes, what if it goes wrong? Yeah. Yeah. And then what if it goes wrong? And then I jotted down a plan and say, okay, if it, if it goes wrong, then this is what you need to do. That's a really pragmatic, uh, solution to that how, how did you come up with a plan because indeed it's something that it sounds really rational but maybe it's something that people might learn from you yeah so you really need to understand uh if you already have identified what you want to do talk mm -hmm. to the people as we said that are already doing the same job in order to understand the pros and the cons etc and then um see what your finances are as well you need to be financially stable yeah uh, you don't want to jump in jump in the dark unless you really have to or you are already without a job so it, there is not such uh, an opportunity volunteer uh, over here in the netherlands and in many other countries volunteering is a way to acquire uh, experience And volunteering is a very tough, especially in a chart, because one day you have a volunteer and the next day you don't have a volunteer. <laughs> uh, jot down a plan uh, from a financial perspective, from an action perspective, and then get to action. Now, that, that sounds like a really good tip. And I think many people would relate to that and can really use that. And maybe as a last thing, Elena, because I, I heard so much about you and how you went through your process of change. And maybe there is a ripple, a ripple effect 
to be taken here because you gave yourself an opportunity. Yeah. How are you now giving an opportunity through your work to other people? <laughs> It's basically a ripple effect or a Jekyll and Hyde situation <laughs> because what I usually do with my clients, I have experienced that to myself first. So, so that's why it's a Jekyll and Hyde situation. There you go. So each and every uh, program that I do have, uh, which is suitable for people who would like to change a job, would like to change a career or would like to develop in their career. Mm -hmm. I, I experimented it on myself first. So if it's working, I know because it's working on me. You don't have to suffer. You don't have to, you don't have to go to work if you don't like it. You don't have to. I mean, you have to because maybe you need to put, you put, you need to put food on the table, which I do understand, but you don't have to stay in that situation if you don't like it. And this is a message of hope. So Thanks so much, Elena, for indeed inspiring and instilling into us a little bit of a, a seed to get better. And then uh, I wish you all the best on your new career. And uh, yeah, for so many years to come. And uh, see you soon in The Hague, I guess. I believe so. Thank you very much, yeah. Vittoria, for the opportunity. This was Elena's story. Elena got stuck in a toxic working environment for so many years, which eventually led her to having a burnout. But hitting rock bottom for Elena became an opportunity to change her life and start anew. So Elena realized that working with people and helping them gave to her much more fulfillment than just working in business analytics. And on her journey to become a career coach, Elena found out so much more about herself, her strengths and weaknesses, and now she's helping others to find the career path that they really fit into. This was the end of this episode. Have you ever had the chance to change your life or do you know anybody who has? Please get in touch with us and leave a comment here below. And if you have enjoyed this episode, do not forget to like and subscribe to this channel and see you next time. Give me a chance on your screen and in your ears. Happy summer, everyone! <laughs>